We start with a point. Rob Bryanson here again with the Imagine of the Tenth Dimension video blog. Today's entry is called Where Are You? I'm going to start with a quote from Joni Mitchell's 1974 song People's Parties. Laughing and crying, you know, it's the same release. As I mentioned two entries ago in The Comedian, I'm from the province of Saskatchewan, Canada, and I'm proud to have been working on the hit Canadian TV show Corner Gas for the past six years. Corner Gas is a smart comedy about people living in a fictional town in Saskatchewan. Artist musician Joni Mitchell, which we just quoted, is also from Saskatchewan. And last blog entry, we talked about the new scientific studies showing how learning to play music can rewire the brain towards having more empathy. Empathy has been a running theme for the last several entries, and we're continuing that discussion here. Now, when I typed Joni's lyrics into Google, one of the top hits came up was uh, a link to a website called Divine Caroline. And there's an article there written by Sherry Covens which blends ancient mysticism with a modern viewpoint. She mentions the seven chakras. And as I've mentioned before, seven also holds an important position within my way of visualizing the dimensions. My song, Seven Levels, is about that idea. And its opening verse includes a mention of chakras as one of the fascinating possible tie-ins to this concept. Okay, stay with me now. These threads really do all weave together in their own strange way. Joni Mitchell started her career in the 60s as a folk singer and sometimes played at a folk club here in my hometown called The Fourth Dimension, another very tiny tie-in to my project. Joni Mitchell released her first album in 1968. That same year, a psychedelic folk music band from Scotland called The Incredible String Band released a song called Douglas Traherne Harding. Last month, we also talked about John Thomas Bryant, creator of Astrotometry. And I'm going to put up a, a link here, a button, and also just show you a little bit from a lovely video John recorded of artist musician Margaret Fabrizio talking about Douglas, Douglas Harding. And please do go watch that, it's great. Which leads us finally to the title of this blog entry, Where Are You? There's a site called Perceiving Reality that asks the same question. If you have nine minutes, watch this thought-provoking video I'm providing a link to which seems to be connected in various ways to the discussions that we've been having here. If you got to the end of the video, you may have been as surprised as I was to see that it was about the teachings of the Kabbalah, a system of ancient mysticism I know little about, but which seems to have some very interesting connections to my way of visualizing reality, including, as others have pointed out to me, and as, and as I showed in my blog entry, Jake Kotze and Mystical Numbers, some fascinating parallels between the Helix logo created for this project and the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Now, there's another video that connects to all this, and we've actually been using it as our background today. Maxwell Egan talks about the nothing that is behind your eyes and how that ties into consciousness and empathy, vibrations and patterns, connectedness and love. And uh, I'm providing a button there for you to be able to go watch that whole video. Please do so. Understanding the ways that we are all connected has been a running theme with my project. I've talked a number of times lately about two of my blog entries from last fall which use Beatles lyrics to tie together modern physics and ancient wisdom. I know you, you know me, and you are me, and we are all together. Seem to keep coming up in this conversation. In the latter of those two entries, I described a highly unusual dream I'd had a few days before. I'm not in the habit of recounting dreams in this blog, but this one was quite different from any others. Imagine my surprise then when I came upon this Maxwell Egan clip, which would have been released just a week or so after I had my dream. And also this blog entry from comedian Joe Rogan, which we're going to uh, scroll the text uh, link for, uh, for you to be able to go to that link, in which he talks about having had the same insights this past summer. Now, I'm hoping that you've gone to look at the Joe Rogan blog and the Max Egan uh, uh, clip. To be clear, I'm not suggesting that we are all one as some new idea that has just arisen within the last year. I discuss the same idea in my book. And of course, various threads of spiritual and mystical thought have said the same thing for millennia. What I'm remarking upon here is my own personal journey where I had an insight 
then was surprised to find other people expressing the same idea in short order. And that experience is part of the pattern matching process that all of us go through as we recognize the connections between the memes all around us. Now, in Joe Rogan's blog, he describes how high he was when he came up with his insight. And of course, the ideas I'm talking about from those Beatles lyrics are also connected to their experiments with psychedelics. The fact that I came up with the same idea without drugs, as I've said many times now, I have no personal experience with psychedelics, is something I find very interesting. And as I just mentioned in The Comedian, I'm becoming more and more intrigued as I read Graham Hancock's book, Supernatural, about what that could mean. Is it possible that the vision seen while in various states of altered consciousness, which includes much more than just drug-induced states, as experienced by shamans throughout mankind's existence and continuing to be part of very many different people's experience up to today, might be more real than we've been led to suspect? Is it possible that shared thought patterns and new inspirations are giving us tangible glimpses into the memes, the patterns of information that exist outside of time and space? And as I've said many times in this blog, and also touched upon in my book, could meditation, trance, and other altered states be providing ways for us to glimpse other aspects of our reality, which are just as real but hidden from view? This position is easily ridiculed, I know. As I've discussed in entries like Daily Parrying and Ever Seen an Aura, there has been a tradition, particularly within the scientific community of the past century, to dismiss anything that acknowledges the participation of our consciousness within the creation of the reality or we are witnessing as being superstition and ignorance. But what are we to make of it when scientists start expressing related ideas about how all matter is connected together, about hidden dimensions that hold patterns that create our reality, about there being ways of viewing reality in which time has no meaning? Let me finish this blog with a famous quote from Albert Einstein. A human being is part of the whole called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. We experience ourselves our thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to our personal desires and to affection for a few persons nearest to us. Our task must be to free ourselves from the prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole of nature in its beauty we shall require a substantially new manner of thinking if mankind is to survive. Again, that's a quote from Albert Einstein. Was Albert smoking the same stuff as Joe? Probably not, and neither was I. But each of us, in our own way, are describing the same idea about how each of us is part of a larger whole. Where are you in all of this? You're right at the very center of your own version of the universe, but you're connected to everyone else to everything else in ways that are very important to remember. And as more and more people realize that, the world becomes a better place. Now we're going to finish off with a song called Seven Levels that we talked about a little bit earlier. But I do have one thing I want to add. After writing this entry about memes and hidden patterns that connected us together, I came upon an entry posted in C. Alms, What is Really Good blog which adds some thought-provoking tangents to this question. And if you're reading along in the text version of this blog, which we do provide a link to in the, uh, in the description box here at uh, YouTube, please do and go read that because it's another one of the interesting connections that have happened. Uh, next blog entry is going to be called Our Non-Local Universe. And then we're going to finish off with this song, Seven Levels. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey. Paul announced it with a gleam in his eye Till they found it a written on high Sanskrit mystics, Jack was true Everybody, Everybody says it's all it must be true There are seven levels, levels to the universe One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Seven levels, from seven down to the first Small, as in geometry, no width or depth. No width or depth.
a place to start. Imaginary construct, the very first part. The very first then part. comes the find the first dimensionality, which is a simple way. From point A to B, the second is a branch. From one line to another, it's pretty about. It's easy to discover there are seven levels. Levels to the universe. From birth to death, there are seven levels, levels to the universe. Four to travel to a tree. Seven levels, seven down to the first. Four to five to jump to another four. Five is a branch, was split in the line. Back to the future. A wrinkle in time. This is how it's always gone. Choose from mine. Choose from mine. For the four we're on. There are seven levels. Levels to the universe. Move to a five to travel to a four. Seven levels. Seven down to the first. Move to a six to jump to another five. Here we go again. All seven levels. At your service. Was never murdered, six would be the way. And seven's all a singing. 